Hey, Riggs here, and uh, today I want to talk about some of the blocks that they showed but did not discuss in the Caves and Cliffs Update 117 due out next summer. Uh, we've had about a week to talk about the highlights, uh, the winner of the mob vote, the Glow Squid. Kind of surprised, by the way. I thought it was going to be the Chilliger. And then, of course, lots of talk about the Warden and how creepy he is and the Skulk sensors and the potential for wireless redstone and, uh, yeah, just how tough the Warden is. He's kind of kind of crazy tough, by the way. Um, and then, of course, there's the axolotls and how cute they are and lots of other things that have been discussed. But today I want to talk about the blocks that were shown but not talked about. Um, and uh, not talking about copper, although let's talk about it for a second. Uh, there will be a weathering effect, and Lady Agnes has been soliciting opinion about how long you think that process should take. Uh, in this time lapse, you'll see it takes about 12 days, which is about four hours of in-game time. Of course, I wonder uh, if you could have that effect with normal bricks and have it just turn cracked or mossy. But uh, there will also be a way of freezing that process for the uh, oxidation of the of the copper, which is why I think there will be wax in the game, and we'll have a little bit more on that in a little bit. So a couple of the officially unnamed blocks we saw in the lush caves here, the first being the azalea roots underneath these azalea trees. Uh, no mention, by the way, if the azalea tree will have a different wood type. Kind of looks like oak to me. But yeah, subtle, kind of rooty soil block, kind of subtle variation on a soil block, dirt block, uh, handy for terraforming, of course. So uh, they'll be extending underneath these azalea trees. I don't know if there'll be a crafting recipe for that or if we'll have to generate it, kind of the same way you can do with podzol around the two by two spruce trees. But yeah, if you follow those azalea roots, it'll lead down to these beautiful lush caves. And by the way, I think we're looking at an azalea sapling there on the left. I don't know how common those will be, if we'll be able to reproduce those or not. But yeah, the moss block is kind of what I'm here to talk about. These beautiful leafy texture, warm kind of saturated green color. Uh, covering the walls and the ceiling and the, the floor there you can see kind of comes in a carpet variety as well and then we have the spore blossom hanging from the ceiling which is going to have a nice little particle effect i don't know if it also casts light as well but you uh, we can see the step plants there in the water and um, yeah beautiful biome i'm glad that they had added a light source so it won't be totally pitch black you'll be able to kind of appreciate it um, and i also appreciate that we'll be able to find these biomes underground by the azalea roots. I wish they would add that with some other things, uh, slime chunks, I'm looking at you, because I don't know how rare these things are gonna be, but it'll be a little nice to be able to find them. Uh, and I think that is a, a step plant, not a lily pad there, so kind of a nice variation for terraforming, like the like this, the root block. But uh, yeah, the axolotls, super cute, uh, but I'm hoping they're not gonna be too, too rare. But uh, moss block, yeah, nice new building block. So the next block is found in the dripstone caves, these amazing caves with the stalactites and the stalagmites. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Uh, but if you look around the uh, border, you see these pinkish sort of textured blocks. And in the initial presentation, it was sort of hard not to be dazzled by these crazy stalactites and stalagmites. Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of an interesting block to play with. Uh, looks like it does a lot of damage, so we're going to have to be careful. But um, yeah, I've been calling it limestone because these stalactites and stalagmites usually are found in caves that are, have limestone. I've done literally seconds of research. Um, but uh, other people are calling it dripstone. And I'm sort of wondering if that is how we will be able to grow these stalactites and stalagmites and maybe you know make it, make it a reproducible, like a craftable block. So yet another stone block we can use to um, build with, but then also maybe create more of these stalactites and stalagmites. I'm calling it limestone, other people are calling it dripstone, but uh, yeah, there you go. All right, there's a lot to see in this section with the warden, but uh, the first thing I want to point out is the skulk growth, which looks like it'll spread onto horizontal blocks, sort of the way vines do uh, vertically, but yeah, that's kind of a new mechanic to have a, a spreading growth. I think it's kind of neat. Um, but the thing I want to point out is this block that uh, the deep dark seems to be carved out of. At first I thought it was like a stone, like a texture pack, but they wouldn't do that. Uh, I think I'm calling it slate, but what a nice building block, kind of looks like bricks. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out are these candles, and that is one of the reasons I think that there will be uh, wax, but I wanted to point out that it looks like it will have the same kind of dynamic that uh, sea pickles do. See, one of the stacks has three, the other one has two, so sort of a variable light source, and you'll see that it dims also. So really a new thing, but we've got to be able to build those, right? And what do you make candles out of but wax? 
So there's the dark candle variety, and then we'll see a white candle. So yeah, different color candles, wouldn't that be nice? Here you can also see the cobblestone next to the new slate stone, so it looks like they will blend pretty well together. Sometimes the new stones don't go so well with the old stones, but um, yeah, so wax. I'm thinking maybe if you uh, smelt down honeycomb, you get some wax, uh, because another reason, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Lady Agnes said there's gonna be a way of stopping that corrosive effect with the copper. And I was thinking if you apply wax to the copper, maybe that would be the way to do it. I really wanted them to check that chest behind us to see what the loot was, because uh, yeah, I'm curious what this guy is going to be guarding. Yeah, a warden generally is guarding something. So uh, you get a good glimpse of this crazy diagonal cave, too, made out of these slate stones. And uh, I guess we're going to have to come down here to, to mine them up. I, don't, I hope there's another prize down here, because... He certainly is an end game challenge and notice he also has the colors of the Eye of Ender and the Ender Chests. So there's been some speculation of what, whether or not he'll be sort of part of the end game progression, whether they'll sort of lengthen that end game chain out. Because um, this guy's in full netherite armor and getting two shot by this guy. So uh, yeah, curious how he will sort of fit into the game, but uh, yeah, there he is. So the next unnamed block I'm calling Marble, and we can see it wrapped around these amethyst geodes. Uh, and I challenge you not to stare at the shiny crystals, but on the sides we can see these sort of smoother white building blocks that are, it's not the, you know, the diorite that everybody loves, um, but it's sort of like a smoother white building block without the much beloved uh, speckly texture of diorite and a um, little, little more texture than quartz. So, you know, a nice building option. And then, of course, we have these crystals, and I'm wondering if we'll be able to maybe use these crystals as part of the crafting recipe to make more marble. Of course, we won't be able to move these geodes, but we will be able to dig out that marble, I'm assuming. Unfortunately, they have confirmed that we will not be able to keep these different layers of the gravel. Uh, everyone was hoping that we'd be able to treat you know, gravel and dirt and sand the same way we do with snow layers. Wouldn't that be an amazing terraforming option? So here we have the painted jars, which was a third way I thought wax could be used, because in ceramics where you put wax on something and then put glaze on it, it doesn't stick to the part that has wax on it. So I was thinking it would be a way we could create layers of a design, uh, sort of the same way we do with banners. Currently, I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. And then we have the improved cave generation, which they didn't talk about the fact that these amazing caves are not going to fit underneath the current uh, you know, sort of default Y level of 62 for sea level. Um, and, you know, ground level is not usually much higher than that. So in this clip especially, he drops 100 blocks or so. I don't know if they're going to end up raising the, you know, build height to uh, higher than 255 or if they're just going to make ground level a little higher. But, uh, yeah, that's something I'm kind of excited about. Uh, and then here I am. I just wanted to show you about 18 months ago, I put out a little special called 115 The Dark where I thought the next update would be a nether update with uh, nether biomes and a neutral race that you could trade with and then cave biomes. So I, I got it kind of right, but I was I was off a little bit. But um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the look at the sort of hidden unnamed blocks. And I'm looking forward to getting some of the snapshots out soon. Uh, but until next time, this has been Riggs. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.